Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Alexander Heinrich. I am a PhD student at the Secure Mobile Networking Lab at the Technical University of Darmstadt. Today, I'm going to present you the work of me and my colleagues, disrupting continuity of Apple's wireless ecosystem security with new tracking, denial of service, and machine in the middle attacks on iOS and macOS. Our work focuses on protocols running over Bluetooth Flow Energy, Apple Wireless Direct Link, and Wi Fi. We start this presentation by defining what is the actual problem that we want to address. How secure are wireless protocols? We start with two short examples. First, AirDrop, a service to share files between devices without using an internet connection. In 2019, a machine in the middle attack has been discovered that allowed an attacker to receive and modify all files transmitted between devices over AirDrop. In the same year, it was first disclosed that AirDrop leaks the phone numbers and email addresses of the sender, an issue that has not been fixed until today. Next, Apple Wireless Direct Link. This is Apple's Wi-Fi based link layer protocol that is utilized for AirDrop. The attack on AirDrop was only possible because of a desynchronization issue in the protocol that would allow any party to position itself as a machine in the middle. Furthermore, a new attack was discovered that exploited a complete iOS system wirelessly, allowing to access files without any user, user interaction. Most of these protocols are integrated into very large ecosystems that share homogeneous code base. This means that this vulnerability in AWDL has already affected a billion devices in different product lines. Our goals in this work have been to define a structured approach on how we can reverse engineer such protocols to further analyze them for security and privacy vulnerabilities, to apply our method on multiple protocols and uncover new issues. AirDrop is not the only proprietary wireless protocol that Apple has designed. In the last years, Apple has built a complex ecosystem around several wireless protocols. This includes a universally shared clipboard between all Apple devices, handoff that allows you to continue tasks you started on one device on another device, and Wi-Fi password sharing, which allows you to send Wi-Fi passwords to a friend when they try to connect to it. Apple summarizes the, them under the umbrella term continuity. In 2021, continuity contains already more than 10 unique services. Those are deeply integrated into the operating system and potential exploits would allow access to private user data and as shown in the past, can even compromise the whole system. Now we are going to present you our structured approach on how to reverse engineer a proprietary wireless protocol in the Apple ecosystem. On this slide, you can see a rather complex interaction between several processes to implement just one of those protocols the universal clipboard. How can we analyze such systems? Based on our experience, we found that it helps to approach such protocols from different vantage points. The first vantage point is the idea is the system as a whole. All wireless services consist of daemons, frameworks, drivers, and wireless interfaces. Daemons are headless processes running in the background. They link frameworks as dynamic libraries. And in many cases, processes communicate with each other. All of those parts can store, access, and process relevant user data. At first, we try to identify the underlying processes and their link works. After filling the blanks, we can see which processes are involved when using the universal clipboard. We can use this information gathered in this step to get a first understanding of underlying tasks. To dive deeper into the protocols, we need to take a look at the binaries involved. In the binaries, we are looking for code sections that construct messages, encode the content of a message, identify encryption algorithms, and discover secrets involved. After we identified those, we can go forward and dynamically analyze them. By using a debugger or tools like Frida, it is possible to print messages before they are encrypted and modify entire method implementations to change the behavior of a protocol. What data is actually sent wirelessly? In our third vantage point, we are looking at the network interfaces. 
In most cases, the devices would use Bluetooth advertisements to inform a nearby device about an upcoming service request. Then they use Wi-Fi or Apple's proprietary AWDL to transfer data. We try to understand how devices are communicating and what they are sending. This is likely that the parts of the communication will be encrypted and we need our binary analysis or a machine in the middle proxy to break the encryption. Every wireless protocol needs to access some sort of secrets to protect the communication with the other peer. All secrets, keys, certificates, and more are stored in the keychain. The keychain is a secure storage which protects all items from access by a malicious process. Gaining full access to the keychain requires to disable system integrity protection on a Mac or to jailbreak an iPhone. After this, all keys can be accessed and exported for further use. All these steps shown require a lot of manual work. We wanted to automate parts of this process and therefore developed a toolkit that helps us with common reverse engineering tasks. In the toolkit, we include three tools for now. The first one helps with identifying relevant processes, frameworks, and code sections by analyzing the system as a whole. The second hooks into methods that encrypt or decrypt continuity messages and prints them in plain text. And the third injects methods that access the keychain and export all secrets that are accessed by a binary automatically. In our last section, we demonstrate our findings and detail on the application of our approach on Apple's Wi-Fi password sharing. We applied our structured approach to analyze Apple's handoff and universal clipboard services, as well as the Wi-Fi password sharing service. First of all, we recover the specification of the involved protocols, and then we scrutinize these protocols for security and privacy vulnerabilities. And we found several exploitable issues. First, we discovered a tracking attack on randomized identifiers used in messages sent over AWDL when using handoff. The identifiers did not change in the same interval, which allowed us to identify devices across multiple randomization intervals. Second, a denial of service attack on handoff is possible by using a groups attack on the authentication tag used for AES and Galois counter mode. Third, Martin et al. have discovered a tracking attack by using the linear initialization vector used in the handoff AES encryption. And fourth, we discovered a minor parsing issue in the Wi-Fi password chain that would cause the settings app on iOS to crash. Finally, we found that Wi-Fi password chain is susceptible to unauthorized auto automatic password entry. This allows an attacker to connect a victim to an attacker-controlled Wi-Fi network. We will explain this issue in the following. With the Wi-Fi password sharing service, Apple devices can share the password of a known Wi-Fi network with their contacts. For example, when inviting friends over to your house, you can easily let them access your own Wi-Fi network. From a protocol perspective, users first select the Wi-Fi network that they want to connect to, and then they are prompted to enter the password. At the same time, the requesting device emits a Bluetooth advertisement to notify other nearby devices that it requires a password. This advertisement contains hashes of both the network name and the requesting device's contact identifiers, such as email addresses or phone numbers. If a nearby device knows the password, both devices set up a Bluetooth connection. The granting device makes sure that it knows the owner of the requesting device. For this, the requesting device sends its contact IDs in a hashed and signed form to the, content, to the grantor. This behavior is similar to airdrop. If the granting device has the requesting device in its contacts, the user can choose to share the password. Then the password will be sent over the existing Bluetooth connection. This schema can be attacked because only the grantor is validating the authenticity. The requesting device does not check if the received password is from a trusted party. To exploit this, an attacker would set up a controlled Wi-Fi access point. This access point uses the same SSID as a nearby Wi-Fi network, but is sending with a stronger transmit power. An iPhone that wants to connect to a Wi-Fi network will only show the access point with, with the strongest signal and therefore only show the attacker's network. When the user selects the network to connect to, 
it will automatically start Wi-Fi password sharing in the background. The attacker performs the handshake and shares the passphrase to the malicious network. This works because only the requesting device needs to authenticate itself to the attacker. The attacker's contact identifiers are not checked by the requesting device. A user is not able to mitigate this issue by declining a received passphrase. The iPhone will connect to the malicious network automatically. The attacker enters now a man machine in the middle position. They are able to perform secondary attacks like DNS spoofing or compromising the entire system via browser exploit. This vulnerability is based in the protocol and has not been fixed since our initial report to Apple in early 2020. As part of this paper, we have released five open source software artifacts. Among them are the automatic reverse engineering toolkit that we discussed earlier, as well as an open re-implementation of Apple's Wi-Fi password sharing protocol that has become quite popular on GitHub. We have discovered four distinct vulnerabilities in Apple's wireless ecosystem. We propose practical mitigations for all of them, as well for one previously discovered flaw. So far, Apple has fixed two of these issues, but three of them remain unfixed. Using our existing expertise, we have looked and will look into, at other interesting systems and protocols, including the proprietary Find My Network, a crowdsourced location tracking system. Now, thank you for attending our talk.